1 Corinthians chapter 13, all the verses 1 through 13. But I'll start with the last phrase of the chapter 12. And now I will show you the most excellent way. The most excellent way among all the gifts. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels and have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues... They will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when perfection comes, complete and perfect love, the imperfect disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put childish ways behind me. Now we see but a poor reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know completely, fully, even as I am already known, fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. There's so much in these verses, and it's probably very familiar with us, to us, love. Love and what it means, and I've been blessed to perform a few wedding ceremonies, and the heart of that chapter I've used as a message, and after three years of marriage, I'm still learning, and some of you, after many, many, many years of marriage, you still learn something new, something that challenges your love. Do you know what I'm talking about? Now, lest you think I'm only thinking of my wife and I's relationship, uh, It's things I knew even before I got married that we sometimes have difficulties with people that are close to us. In the home I grew up in with my three or two older brothers and a younger brother and my four sisters, there were times when we tried one another's patience. One of the knots in this list, see there's some negatives and there's some positives, That's why the working title was Love Is and Is Not. It's not easily provoked. Have you ever done something you knew it was wrong and somebody reacted as if you did something horrible, terrible, awful, the worst thing in the world? In other words, they overreacted, according to your mind. Have you ever done that? Anybody? A few. Oh, there we go. Is that many? Many the mouse admits to doing something that provoked someone else. We don't mean to, do we? 
We didn't know we were going to get a, a blast of a reaction from someone because we didn't know what was going up in their head at the moment. We care for them. We love them. We, we believe they care and love us, and yet we miss it. But we need to move on from thinking of personal relationships because Paul is writing to a congregation, and that congregation has had issues to deal with. Paul cares for them deeply as he cares for the other places that he's written letters to, Thessalonica uh, and other places. My brain just lost a, a, a beat. Galatia, the Ephesians, the Philippians. So Paul is writing these letters, and he's, he's been there, he's preached there, and then he gets news that something is happening there. Well, the news from Corinth was, we like that the Holy Spirit has gifted us. We really like that we can speak in unknown languages. Glossolalia or something like that is the Greek word. Uh, they unknown to the speaker, but maybe known by one of the listeners. We really like the, the gift of prophecy. We really like it when there's someone with the gift to interpret the tongues. We really like those three gifts. And Paul has to give them a, a bit of correction and to say that even those gifts of the ability to communicate, to explain, they're, uh, they're not the best. They're not the greatest. So he moves from chapter 12 where he talked about the relative importance of some of the gifts and he said, I want to show you a more excellent way. And what is that more excellent way? It is agape, the Greek word for love in the English. Self-giving love. That's why God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit are the personification of the word love, of self-giving. God gave of himself when the world, the universe was created. God gave of himself on the cross on our behalf when the blood flowed from Jesus Christ that brings us forgiveness of our sins. And God, through the Holy Spirit coming down and entering into believers' hearts, shows us love so that we might walk in Jesus' steps. Love is above all the gifts. And we're called to not have it just to have it. So you know how you receive a gift and you're so glad you have it? And yet, it's not for the having, it's for the using. If we have the gift of love, and I'm preaching to myself, you got to know this, we got to practice it. We have to practice love. Uh, there's a song I, I learned at a camp once, love is like a magic penny. Use it, lend it, spend it, and you'll have so many They'll roll all over the floor. Love is like a magic penny. If you use it, if you spend it, if you lend it, you get more. It's one of those strange things that just because you're giving love, you, you don't lose it. You gain it back again. Do any of you understand that? Have you received that in your life where you had a challenge? Uh, like a neighbor, like a, a family member. And instead of the knots that are in this passage, uh, not rude, not boastful, not envious, not proud, not selfish, not easily angered, and doesn't keep a record of wrongdoings. That instead of all of those, you chose love. Because love is also a choice. Love has to be used. 
you might know some people that have grown embittered in life. Something they wanted never happened. And Paul says, love. Instead of the knots that are in this chapter, Paul says, love. Give of yourself. You've heard the phrase, uh, when you got a dispute with someone, try to meet them halfway. And sometimes, no, you have to go more than that. You have to get all the way over to their side and show the care and the love necessary to resolve whatever the situation is. Love is permanent. Every other gift that Paul has written about is temporary in one way or another. In fact, all the other gifts are only effective by the power of love. And love is powerful when it's motivated by the Holy Spirit within us. Paul, in his letter to the Romans, chapter 12, verse 9, says, love must be genuine. And by that, sometimes you, you've heard of uh, partial or conditional or fake love. Now, Paul says, let it be genuine. Somehow, somewhere in your mind and your heart, be genuine about your actions and words of love. Jesus had a parable about the greatest commandments. The first one, to love God with all your heart and your mind and your soul and to love your neighbor as yourself. And there was this person who wondered, what does that mean to love my neighbor as myself? And that's where we get in John, or excuse me, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, verses 25 to 28 and following, the parable of the good Samaritan. The Jews didn't like the Samaritans. The Samaritans had this hybrid uh, worship of God that didn't quite meet the, the law of Moses. And they were not welcomed or liked. And the Samaritan came upon this person that had been damaged, beaten up, and left on the side of the road. Two holy men went by and did nothing. They avoided this hurt person. And finally, the Samaritan solved the problem, dressed the wounds, put the injured person on his donkey or something and, and took him to a local inn and talked about him and when he left, he left extra money and said, if, if it costs more to get him back up on his feet, I'll pay it the next time I'm coming through here. And then Jesus at the end of the parable says, who then was the neighbor? The, the answer was the good Samaritan. Not the two holy men, but the good Samaritan, the despised uh, unwanted, unwelcome neighbor to the Jewish people. Where does love come from? In Romans chapter 5, verse 5, God's love within comes from the Holy Spirit. We are motivated by the love of God and the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to show love. Many times when we're down and out, it's the thought of love and being loved, of God's love, that makes life worth living. It brings value to our lives. And we're called to bring value to other people's lives by showing that love. Love is uh, further defined, or the fruit of love, in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 through 23. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, meekness, gentleness, self-control. And I came across a preacher that went through each of those, uh, Ray Steadman. When it speaks of joy, joy is love celebrating relationship. Peace, peace is love at rest. Patience is love able to wait. 
Kindness is love and how it reacts. Goodness is love making a positive choice. Faithfulness is love keeping its word. We sang that hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Gentleness is love caring, empathizing with the person that might be hurt. And self-control is love overcoming temptation. Love. As Paul's put it, love, the greatest of these. Love has two friends or companions. Hope, excuse me, these three remain. Yes, faith, hope, and love. Faith and hope are companions to love, and yet they pass away. Love remains. Our awareness of God loving us brings to us our capacity to show love. Awakened by the Holy Spirit, we begin to love like Jesus. I said begin, because many of us are still learning, and we will continue to learn until our last breath. Love is enriching, it's edifying, it's enduring. Love is the preeminent gift It's practical, and it's permanent, and it's available to everyone. All the other gifts are uniquely given as God sees the need, not just of the individual, but of the body that they are part of. And love, we know that the actions of love can overcome hurt feelings. I know I've received that. Love isn't temporary. It's not momentary. It's it's not like the, as Paul put it, uh, a sounding gong. I've been to places. I was blessed in Uncle Sam's Navy to visit South Korea. And we came to this temple. And there's a a replica of it in uh, San Pedro, California. A peace bell. A gift from the South Koreans to America. And it's, it's this huge thing. It's somewhat round in shape, flat on the top and open at the bottom. And there's not a clacker like a bell uh, or a cowbell or something. In, instead, you hit it with something. Uh, and in some places, they have these huge, usually brass, some type of metal being hung somewhere and someone takes a big old mallet and smacks it, and it reverberates. And the reverberation, the resonance of that sound might last a little while, but it will end. I don't know how many of you have stood on a, a hillside in a special place, and you called out, And you heard your words come back to you, the echo. Well, it might echo back and forth off of different surfaces in that usually it's a valley. But then finally it fades away. Many of the gifts that Paul talks about will fade away. But the one that remains is the self-giving love. We, we focus on the positives, and just real quickly, we know that love is not jealous, it doesn't brag, it's not self-important, it doesn't misbehave, it's not selfish, it's not easily provoked, it doesn't make a list, a remembrance of wrongs made to that, but it, and it doesn't rejoice in bad news, but rejoices in the truth, Ta- Paul talked about. Uh, speaking the truth in love. And sometimes that means not saying anything. What's that phrase? If you can't say anything nice, thank you, I needed that help.
I came across an event in someone's life. Um, it was a recent widow of a missionary. Her son and she were returning to London, England, and they were on a voyage. And on that vessel, one of the sailors had an accident that caused a wound, and that wound became infected and really smelled bad. The other sailors would not let that injured sailor remain in their place of sleeping, the birthing compartment. They, they picked him up bodily. They put him on the, the deck in all weather. They left him. They, they would only feed him if they could push something towards him with a long oar or stick. And so this injured sailor was practically left to die. But this young man's mother who had lost her husband, she took pity on the sailor. And even though he was bitter and angry and uh, somewhat abusive to her, she would come, she would clean out that smelly wound repeatedly, day after day, and feed him in spite of whatever infection he might have had, so that at the end of the voyage, this bitter-minded sailor was able to limp off the ship, became a committed Christian, and committed to this woman that showed self-giving love. Some of us have been called in situations like that or worse to show love, and we did. Some people believe that the spiritual gifts are over and done with, with the apostles, with the writing of the New Testament, but love still remains. There are places and times in our world today where some of the spectacular gifts of the Holy Spirit are still in operation. But for the rest of the world, the important gift, the gift of love, is called for and expected. Everything that happened on the day of Pentecost where the tongues were spoken and, and understood by a few happened for a reason, and that's why they still operate in places today, the different gifts. Love is something that we should make our chief goal. We should work at it. We should think about it and seek it in our behavior, in our thinking. We should follow it, go towards it, and pursue it. Our purpose in life, what life is all about, is that we might become fully mature, and fully mature is the ability to show self-giving love following the example of Jesus Christ. Lord, help us in that pursuit. Amen.